error is something that analytical chemists deeply care about. We're very focused on reducing error sources so that we get a better measurement. And it's important to identify what error is and where it came from. And that way we can have a possible solution to eliminate that or at least reduce that error. So what is error? Well, error is some deviation from the actual expected value. So the expected value or the um, accepted value you may have heard it as or the true value is represented by this U. And here's our error. And if we take the sample average that we've calculated, the mean, and subtract the expected value, that's our error. This could be a positive or negative number. But this is our absolute error. Something that you may be more familiar with is relative error, or sometimes you'll hear, have heard it calculated as percent error. And so the percent relative error is simply the average minus the accepted value divided by the accepted value multiplied by 100%, and there you go. You may have calculated this before. Now, those are ways of calculating error based on a known value. Sometimes we don't know the value, and then these would be impossible to calculate. There are other ways of estimating the error using statistics, but we'll have to talk about that later. For now, let's look at two different types of error. There's determinant error and, of course, indeterminate error. Now, in determinant error, this particular error has a specific magnitude and direction. That means it always has the same amount of error in either the positive direction or it's always in the negative direction. Now, when I say a specific magnitude, this magnitude could be a percentage as well. So if our value went up, so say we measured something and it measured 11 when it was supposed to measure 10, well, that's an error in the positive direction and it's a 10% error. Now, we say we measured another sample and it was supposed to measure 100, but instead it measured 110. That's still a 10% error. This could still be a determinant error. Of course, it could also be that we measure a sample that measures 11 and we measure another one that measures 101 and in that case, it's not a percent that's varying. It's varying by the same magnitude. Both of these cases would be examples of, could be examples of determinant error. They're both in the same direction and they have a specific measurable quantity. Now, what are some of the ways that determinant error could be introduced into our analysis? Well, one way is sampling error. We have to be careful that we actually have a representative sample of whatever we want to measure. One example that I like to use is let's examine chocolate bars. And let's look at the Snickers bar. Now, say we have an individual that is allergic to peanuts. We know that Snickers bars contain peanuts. But what if we had a bar that did, was unwrapped, so we did not know what brand it was? If we just took a shaving of the outside of the bar, we may only detect chocolate and then determine that, yes, indeed, this has no peanuts inside of this bar. We give it to the person that has a peanut allergy they briefly enjoy the Snickers bar and then they need to be rushed off to the hospital. Why is that? 
because we did not have a representative sample. In the interior of that candy bar were peanuts, and we did not crush up the sample or inspect enough of the candy bar to determine that. So that would be an example of uh, not obtaining a representative sample. Another thing that could be more real life is, say we wanted to measure the salinity of the ocean. Well, we'll have to take samples from around the world and we would want to avoid samples that are particularly near a river or some kind of outlet from from a fresh water source because that would decrease the relative salinity in that area. That would not be a representative sample for the ocean. So we need to be aware of sampling errors. Another error that could happen is a method error. This is an error that is resultant from a faulty method or a faulty calibration. So Usually we'll have a signal, we'll have some proportionality constant times the concentration, plus our method blank. If there is a problem with the method blank, or a problem in measuring the proportionality constant, we could introduce a method error. The way to deal with that is to either improve the method, or create a new calibration curve based on what we have measured. Some ways that a method error could creep in would be, for example, we're doing a gravimetric analysis. We've precipitated the um, sample and then we dry it, but maybe we don't dry it so that all of the water has gone. Well, this would be a problem with the method error. And it could be a determinant error as long as we did the method exactly the same each time. It would have perhaps a slight amount of variation in it, but it would always be in the same direction, which is important for it to become determinant error. This is something that could be corrected by simply drying it for longer, as an example. There are also measurement errors that would fall under the determinant error um, umbrella. This could result from faulty equipment or uncalibrated equipment. Say we have a pipette and it says on it that it is 10 milliliters, but when we actually use it, it's 9.8 milliliters. Well, this is a determinant error. It's always delivering less than what we expect. This could be remedied by calibrating the equipment and finding out it actually delivers 9.8. And that's not a problem for our analysis as long as we use the new determined value or we calibrate the equipment. And then finally, we have personal errors. Now, it is common for students to write personal error as the result of almost every possible error that they have on there. And yes, it is the case that there's always personal error. We have particular habits or biases when we set up an experiment. We may always like to measure just a tiny bit low or perhaps a tiny bit high. We have our habits when we're rounding. We have thing, perhaps we have a particular color that we like to titrate to. All of this is personal error. That said, it's often not as large as a lot of students would like to imagine. So, when you're writing a laboratory report or something like that, yes, personal error could, could be the cause of something, but it often is nowhere near enough to account for the error that some students end up measuring or having in their experiment. It could be the result of one of these other types of determinant error. 
And for that matter, it could also be an indeterminate error. Now let's briefly touch on that. Indeterminate error is different because it is a random variation in both magnitude and direction. This is an irreproducible error. Sometimes it's a little bit high, sometimes it's a little bit low, and the amount that it varies is not consistent. It may be 5% high at one point, and it may be 2% low at another. It, this is much harder to detect, and it is also much harder to deal with. In fact, you will never get rid of all of the indeterminate error. There are things that we can do to help with it. One is, as an example, let's measure volume. If we used a beaker to measure volume, we would have a very large amount of indeterminate error because the markings on it are just terrible at actually determining the quantity. We could do a lot better with a graduated cylinder, but we could do even better than that. We could move over to purpose-built um, volumetric glassware, such as a volumetric flask, or volumetric pipette that has much lower indeterminate error. And again, we could calibrate that equipment to remove the determinant error portion from it, and then we'll only be left with the indeterminate amount. That's important to realize. One of the ways to deal with indeterminate error is to switch your apparatus to a better or more accurate apparatus. Changing from a 0 0.01 gram balance down to a 0 0.0001 or a tenth of a milligram balance is an excellent way to reduce indeterminate error. Things like that can be helpful. So, Keep that in mind when you're doing experiments or you're evaluating data. Think about ways that we can reduce the error by selecting appropriate glassware when necessary and try to eliminate as much as possible personal habits or biases when you're producing um, chemical uh, experiments or performing chemical measurements.